the long awaited video. 12 days since my last video, guys. I appreciate the patience. Let's get into part two of my ICT 2024 mentorship summary. Now, again, if you want this free PDF, I've got a free Discord. Link is in the description to this video. But without talking too much, let's get straight into the video because I want to get into the nitty and gritty of it. Now, I want to firstly talk about the first fair value gap after 9.30. It's something that in the last video I touched on briefly, but I thought today I'd go into a little bit more depth, how you can apply it. And again, these are just my interpretations of how to apply the ICT 2024 mentorship. So again, it's really well known that ICT has mentioned that you can use the first fair value gap after 9.30 to phrase trade ideas. In this first example, I just want to show you how you can pair not only this, but other confluences with this idea. Neither thing is right or wrong. Keep that in mind. And I've labeled multiple moving parts or movement parts here. Number one is the sweep of smooth sell side. Number two is the opening range. Number three is 950 to 1010 macro. The next is the first fair value gap after 930. And the last one is inversion fair value gaps. I really want to give you a way that you can apply these concepts but pair these with other things too. It's not just a matter of, oh, the first fair value gap. You need to have a narrative. You need to understand these things also to phrase the highest probability of trades. Again, it's my belief that all these things come together. It's not just one thing. Even without this concept of the 930 fair value gap, you could still phrase a similar idea. And we'll talk about what I mean in just a second. So again, I've labeled a few things here. And I'll just zoom in so you guys can see. Now I've labeled a few things. Number one, we've got the smooth sell side down below. Now, why is that smooth sell side? Why? Because you've got relative equal lows here and these are relative equal lows here. Now, one other thing, if you want to write this in the notes, this is from the previous macro, right? Which is from 8.50 to 9.10 and that is also time-based liquidity, write that down. So you've got this low and you've got this low, they're pretty much relative equal lows. 9.30 open is roughly right here and this is the first fair value gap from 9.30. Now, you might say, well, how do you use that fair value gap? And technically, there's two ways to use it. I've only discussed one in this PDF, but let me just go through an extra one here. And again, it's all free in the link in my description in my, in my Discord. Now, what you see here is we sweep this buy side liquidity. We have a nice order block created and another order block created here. So in the case of moving down towards the smooth sell side, you can trade towards liquidity, that's important, or you can trade away from liquidity. That's really important. There's two ways you can trade. In this instance, we're going to trade towards liquidity and then we'll talk about how you can trade away from liquidity. So in this case, we have this smooth sell side. Maybe that's your target. You know that's the first fair value gap after 9.30. You want to see that inverted. That happens with this candle here. You can enter short right away, treating this as an inversion fair value gap, number one. Number two, if you want the really safe entry, the really risk-free entry, see this candle here. You've got an up-close candle and then two down-close candles. What happens here when this down close candle actually closes? What does this green candle become? It becomes an order block. Now in a downwards move, the up close candles should act as resistance. And in an upwards move, the down close candles should act as support. That there is the lowest risk entry. And you might say, well, what do you mean? Like how do I take advantage of that? If you entered here, your stock could go above this order block, this green candle. And where would you be targeting? These relative equal lows. So in this case, you're going to use the first fair value gap after 9.30 as an inversion fair value gap, but you're going to pair that with the concept of targeting smooth liquidity, equal lows, equal highs, and also pair that with the idea of an order block. Now, let's assume you don't like that. You're like, no, I don't trade in the first half an hour because the first half an hour is the opening range. Completely fair enough, right? You can see at the bottom here, you've got 9.30 to 10. I've marked out the opening range here. I've also marked out the macro. So we're going to talk about different ways that you can actually apply these concepts. It's not a fixed way to do it. It's very fluid. There's many ways to approach and actually apply these concepts. So that's the first way you could do it. Or you could simply say, okay, I missed the move. I don't like it. I'm going to wait to see what happens after this sell side is swept. Wait, let the market show its hand. Let the market develop. Once the market sweeps that sell side, what do we do? Does price reject at that point or do we displace further through? It rejects at that point, and that is a good liquidity sweep. Write that down. So we sweep that smooth sell side. Doesn't this look like other things to you? Doesn't this look like maybe the Judas swing, the 9.30 to 10 Judas swing? Doesn't this maybe look like a good macro trade? Doesn't this maybe look like I could use an inversion fair value gap and a few other things to phrase a trade? It does, and it is, right? So this is the, the fluidity of how you can use these concepts. They're not fixed. If you had no understanding previously of this first fair value gap after 9.30. Imagine that purple box did not exist. 
I'm going to say that a lot of people here would treat this as a sweep of sell side, an inversion fair value gap, and take a long position. There's nothing wrong with that. Or sweep a sell side, inversion gap, trade back into this bullish gap, and take a long. Due to swing 9.30 to 10 during the opening range, and let the macro do the heavy lifting from 9.50 to 10.10, and push price higher. It's well known, right, that these macros, 10 minutes before and 10 minutes after, which is purely or in majority what I trade, they have high probability setups, and you can pair these with other concepts too. But what if you want to incorporate everything? Hey, Ruben, I want to actually incorporate this 930 fair value gap. I want to incorporate the macro. I want to incorporate inversion fair value gaps. I want to incorporate everything. Is it asking for too much? Sometimes, but in this case, we can talk about it. So in this next slide, I'll just go into a little bit more detail about how you can use this first fair value gap. And again, if you want this PDF, it's in the description, free Discord. It's a very tight-knit community there. And I'll be posting all these PDFs, even my previous videos. If you haven't seen my last video summarizing the 2024 mentorship, it's actually 40 minutes long. My longest video on YouTube, many examples in there talking about this and also other concepts that he's talked about previously earlier on in the mentorship. Now, you look at the macro here. We sweep sell side, we invert this fair value gap. You can enter, look at this, look how we treat this first fair value gap. Initially, it's an inversion fair value gap. So we disrespect it on the downside. Then we disrespect it on the upside and then we trade back into it. It's almost like a reclaimed fair value gap, which is what ICT calls it. So now we've seen the fluid nature of this 930 gap. Number one, we saw it used as an inversion. Number two, we've now seen it used as a reclaimed fair value gap. Both ideas are valid. First idea is trading towards the smooth sell side. Second idea is waiting for the smooth sell side to be swept and then using a macro to phrase a trade alongside that first fair value gap after 930. Pretty easy stuff, incorporating concepts that all known before, but adding that extra little bit of source to phrase a high probability trade idea. Now, I want you guys to see what we do there. Look how we accumulate inside of this reclaimed gap. We don't come above it and then close below here. We don't do that. We've got this inversion already. We find support here, we push higher. We find support here, we push higher. And to be honest with you, this macro 950 to 1010, this here is a really nice entry. I'm going to go in even, even further. I want you guys to have a look. You can enter. See this inversion gap that I've marked out in orange? If you enter on the closure of this candle, your stop loss can be extremely tight because now you've got more than one PDRA supporting price. So how might you like to use the 930 gap? You might like to use that as an extra PDRA to support your price action. I've got other videos where I talk about this and ICT does as well. You want to have three PDRA supporting price. And he also says, if three PDRAs are disrespected, your stop loss is probably next. And a lot of the time it's true, right? So if you enter from this inversion, your stop can go nice and tight. And you've got all these PDRA supporting price action. Again, guys, this is an application of how you can use not only the opening range, not only the 9.30 to 10 due to swing, which is from here to here, not only the macro, not only the smooth sell side, you're incorporating everything he talks about both in this mentorship and previous mentorships. So the way I'd like to see this and the way that I personally use this, and you'll see some examples in the future in different sessions in this PDF is take what you like and leave what you don't. You don't have to know everything, but if you like to learn and you like to know, this is the way that I'd incorporate it. Again, both these ideas are still valid to enter that trade. Maybe you're using the 930 fair value gap and the macro, the 930 fair value gap, a macro and an inversion. They're both valid trade ideas, or you might even pair that with the 930 to 10 due to swing. All these ideas are extremely valid and they're completely fine. Keep that in mind. Now let's look at a second quick example and this is from the 17th of the 9th, just recently, just last week. I firstly want to say that nothing is 100%. No entry model or no criteria is going to work 100% of the time. These are just examples I've picked out that look clean and look nice so I can illustrate and talk about the concept. But in this case, I've marked out this first fair value gap after 9.30. And in this case, what are you doing? You're trading towards this smooth sell side, that's number one. You've swept buy side, this is that first fair value gap, and we invert that here. That also now becomes a balanced price range. We trade back up into that here, we form low resistance here on the sell side, and we aggressively move to these two relative equal lows. So in this case, you're using that first fair value gap after 9.30 as an inversion fair value gap, and you're using the concept of smooth sell side to trade towards. Very simple, very clean, very easy. What about this, Ruben? What about, I don't trade the New York session, I trade the Asian session or I trade the London session. I trade all sessions at the moment. I've been you know, dabbling in the New York session, but I trade everything now. Macros occur every single hour and this is why I love this model. 
right? Both the power of three macro model, which I teach probably, but also just the basic macro model and low resistance liquidity. I've got a video of that, guys. A video on my YouTube channel. Check out, you know, four videos ago. I talk about a really easy scalping model and you can use this for any session. And you can pair that model with these concepts I'm talking about here in the 2024 mentorship to phrase these high ideal trades that you can take advantage of. Asian opening range, Asian trades. How do you trade the Asian session, Ruben? How do you trade the Asian session, Ruben? The Asian session doesn't have enough volume. How do you take trades? I keep getting chopped up. Keep it simple. Keep it simple, guys. Keep it simple. There's no need to overcomplicate things. And this is how I personally trade the Asian session for those that are interested. Use this to your benefit. And this is what I do almost every single day. Now, ICT has mentioned a few things. Firstly, he's talked about how there's an opening range. We've talked about this previously. Every single hour, the first half an hour, right? It's separate to the opening range that goes from 9.30 to 10 in the New York session. So if that confuses you, I'd encourage you to look at my previous video where I talk about that in more detail. And that's obviously part one of the 2024 mentorship summary. That's number one. Number two, we look at NDOGs and NWOGs because I guess in these situations, guys, the NWOG or NDOG or any PDRA volume imbalance fair value gap created is going to be created at the start of the day. So it makes sense if you're trading the Asian session, you'd probably want to use something that's created nearby rather than later on. Now, mind you, you can use these later on. You can extend that across the whole day. You can extend that to the next day, to the next day, to the next day, to the next day. If I'm trading the Asian session though, I want to see how we react once we first trade into it. That's important. I also want to see what we've left inside of the opening range and also inside the first hour of the market open. Keep that in mind. So I just want to talk about what I've marked out on this chart and then we'll get into the fine details of what's actually happening here. I've marked out the opening range, which is the first 30 minutes of the session. I've marked out the new day opening gap volume imbalance, not the whole new day opening gap because I know ICT marks out quite a bit more of the range sometimes, but I've marked out the volume imbalance. I like to mark out either the volume imbalance or the fair value gap that's created in that first minute or two. It's really important. I've also marked out the first hour of market open. I've also marked out the macro and also smooth buy side. So we're going to incorporate all these things now. And I'm putting my little touch onto this trade idea because as most of you guys know, I trade macros most of the time or previous macro behavior. I don't have to take a trade in a macro because I can use what's previously done and I can anticipate that the macro do something important. Keep that in mind. Now using this example, how would you phrase a trade in this particular situation? What I'll be watching or waiting for is to wait for the market to trade into that new day opening gap. Wait for it. Wait, 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 wait. Also, I want you to note down what do we generate? What do we form in that first hour of market open in the opening range? We form all these smooth buy side points. All these smooth buy side points. We fail to take it out in the 650 to 710 macro. We come lower. And what do we do? What do we do inside of the end dog? Do we respect the end dog as support or resistance? We've talked about this previously. New day opening gaps, new week opening gaps, they can act as support or resistance. And that's personally how I like to trade them. I like to trade them like a fair value gap. I like to mark out the different quadrant levels. And they're all reacting reacting points, potentially the 0.25, the 0.5, the 0.75. And ideally, the less it goes into the PDRA and the quicker it reacts, the more, in this case, the more bullish the price action is. If price was to come all the way down here and close down here, would I anticipate price to move up? Probably not, right? But because we've reacted from the top portion and then we've had the inversion fair value gap, I'm quite confident that price probably wants to move to the smooth buy side. Because again, price moves from buy side to sell side, buy side to sell side. And what is approaching here? We've got a macro approaching and we know, well, let's look at the macro does. Look at the macro does. We know the macro, and this is the 19th of September, by the way. Have a look at the charts, and we just go big, 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 up, 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 up to infinity and beyond, right? Which is what I posted on my social media platforms. And you would have seen that on YouTube or from my Discord, you've seen that too. Now, let's just have a look at this, and let's talk about, you know, what I sent out to the Discord. And you can see, you know, what I was thinking, what I was feeling. Again, I'm in Australia, so this is at 9.33 in the morning. 9.33 in the morning, if you're interested in New York time, is 7.33. And that is roughly about here, right, with price action. Now, what I said to the premium Discord, and I don't typically do signals, but what I've been doing lately is just posting any ideas that I have. We will go live in the Discord for a whole of London session, mainly a couple hours here and there, uh, three, four, five days a week. But if I see something before or after, I often post something 
especially if it's something I'm looking to take myself. Now, I want to say here, if anyone's interested, just watching the current volume imbalance or the end dog that we're sitting in. And this is what the price looked like at that particular time. I said, I'm seeing if price finds support here. Again, end dogs or end wogs as support. And then I'm looking to take a trade long in the next macro or around that time frame. Would need to see support here and then an inversion fair value gap and potentially an order block for an entry. And what happens? Exactly that. Now, do I know that it's going to do that? No, I don't know that. But if it does that, I'm confident that all the price signatures are matching up. And my whole trading strategy and how yours should be is simplistic, very simple. I'm looking for price to react from certain key levels. doesn't matter what session. It could be New York session like we talked about. It could be Asian session. And in a second, we'll talk about the London session. I'm looking for price to react at key levels during key time frames. And at those key levels and during those key time frames, I'm looking for specific things. In this case, I'm looking for an inversion fair value gap. Why? Because we created this bearish gap here and I wanted that to be inverted to signify that price wanted to move higher. Nice and simple. Now, just to take advantage of a few more examples, let's now talk about the first fair value gap after 9.30 again. And let's just look at a quick example. And again, if you want this PDF, guys, in the description, check out my free Discord. I'll let you guys read that. But you know, for the meantime, let's have a look at this and let's talk about all the things we could use to take a trade to the upside here. Now, this here is the first fair value gap after 9.30. It becomes an inversion fair value gap here, and you've also got a bullish gap here. Now, for a lot of people, they might enter off this inversion. But for those using the 930 fair value gap, you might be waiting for that to happen. And obviously, you've got the smooth buy side here. What else could this be? This could also be the power three accumulation, manipulation, distribution. So you can merge these concepts together. And what I've mentioned here is that using the 930 fair value gap, it's not the be all and end all. I want everyone to appreciate that. The content that ICT is creating is great, it's beneficial, but take what you need. Take what you need and leave the rest. And I can show you guys on an example here, and this is from the London session for those that trade the London session. But again, the main thing that I use from the 2024 membership, I'd say, if I'm trading Asian session, it's gonna be the end dog and end wog. It's gonna be opening ranges, low resistance liquidity, and then obviously macros is how I trade. That's how I've always traded. Now, looking at this, you can see you've got this accumulation pocket, you've got this smooth buy side, low resistance liquidity. I've marked out the opening range here, the macro here, and a sweep of sell side here. I've also marked out this because we've talked about the first fair value gap after the New York session opening range, but what about the first fair value gap after every single opening range of every single hour? Because ICT's talked about how you can trade every single hour, and personally, this lines up with my theory and his theory on macros. If the macro is... 10 before and 10 after every single hour, and you trade that macro, that's 10 before and 10 after, you can look at the previous price action to see what it's done. Let me just explain what I mean here. So looking at the bottom here, you can see you've got you know, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, three o'clock. So essentially 12 to 12.30 is an opening range, one to 1.30, two to 2.30, three to 3.30, four to 4.30, five to 5.30, six, and it goes on and on and on. Then into the New York session, it's a little bit different because 9.30 to 10 is the opening range because 9.30 is the open of the market. Keep that in mind. Now, I like to use this now and again. You can see I've marked at the opening range. I just like to see what price has done there. We form this sell side. We sweep that just outside of the opening range. Then I like to see sometimes what that first fair value gap does outside of the opening range. Again, the opening range is the first half an hour in this case. And the way I like to apply it, and this is for Asian session and London session in particular, I look at you know the first fair value gap and see what we do with it. In this case, we invert that here. We trade back into it, we displace higher. And this is something we talked about with the Discord. Right, this smooth buy side is so obvious, way too obvious. And we had the macro coming up. So you can use all these concepts and pair these together to phrase that high probability trade idea. Even without understanding the opening range, guys, you can still... Here's the thing, you could still treat that as an inversion, a sell side sweep and inversion, enter in between the macros. Why? Because you anticipate the macro to do something important. And in this case, the macro starts the run up of, of liquidity in the buy side. You've already got that draw. You've already got the smooth buy side. And that's something that's reinforced in you know this mentorship from ICT. But it's just something I want to reinforce and I want to really, really put out there that you do not need to know and apply every single concept in every single trade. It's not, it's not important. What's important is this, and this would be my closing remarks here. These would be my closing remarks. 
take what you need from ICT, take what you need from my YouTube videos, from my, my premium services, from my mentorship videos, whatever it might be. Take what you need, take what you like, study the market, and look for price to do certain things at key zones during key timeframes. 